Okay, so today we're gonna try to go through all the basic functions and settings for the Z9. Uh, I did a video on the on the on the first part of the manual, but I think it was difficult to see the buttons. So here I'm gonna try to do it so you can see the buttons. So starting at the front, I'm going to so I'm going to start at the front and I have a pen here. So basically here we have the function buttons. Function one, let's see. Function one, function two, and function three. So those we will be able to program for anything that you want to have handy. Then over here, okay, so let's turn it this way. You have, this is what is called the, this is called, so this is called the control panel. And the control panel has basically all the information that you would wanna have. So you just put it this way so that we can easily read it. So right now we have uh, the on and off switch. By the way, you see this little light bulb? You see how it illuminates it? Maybe you didn't notice illuminating, but in the dark you would see it. So here we have, so right now the cap is on. Let me take the cap off. So here we have that it's on manual, okay? 1 50th of a second, the aperture, the battery, the exposure, AF single servo, uh, wide ISO 400, and then it has, this is how much it has left on the first slot. I only have one camera, sorry, one memory stick on right now. And then starting from the top, so we have here the on and off switch, obviously. This is, you see it has like a little bulb. So it lights up things. ISO, exposure compensation. This is for video recording. Uh, what else do we have here? This, so if we press this, right now it's on single, right? But if we put it on a different one, so you see how I'm pressing, I'm pressing this little button to move this wheel. So you, when I move the wheel, you see now it goes to 10 seconds. Now it's 20 frames per second. So when you press on this, you could change the 20 frames per second by moving the wheel. See how it changed from 20 to 15. Bracketing, okay? So one stop, three stops, or if you want to do a different, you know, in, in terms of every two stops, okay? So let's turn. Okay, so let's make sure, yeah, it's off. Uh, sometimes I leave the bracketing on and I don't remember. This is for flash. If you had a speed line, you could increase. So usually it, this allows you, the front one allows you the different options. Sorry, the one in the back allows you to see the different options. There is no more than one option. And then the one in the front is the one that allows you to see within that option what to do. So in this one, there's only one option. So this is flash, think of it as flash compensation. So you increase by one third the compensation of the flash. So if you have uh, this flash in TTL, which is the equivalent of auto, auto exposure, and you want to put it higher, then you can do that here, or you can do it on the flash. My recommend, I haven't tried it with this camera, but my experience is it's better to do it on the flash. Okay, let's see what else do we have here that is interesting. This is just, you know, all the connections uh, you have. The important ones is, so this one is for, this is a 10 pin remote. So if you have uh, one of your old remotes, Nikon remotes, it would work on this. This is to, like for strobe lights, you have a cable that is uh, that works in there. Uh, this one has, you know, HDMI and all that. Now the button that is really important is this one. So this one allows you to to change the the out of focus mode. So let's let's do that. I'm going to go over here, and you see now I'm pressing it. So over here, oh, it's hard to see. It's hard to see. Okay, we'll do it in the screen. 
you see now, so over here, so let me put this to hold the lens. <laughs> the camera is heavier than the lens. By the way, let's, uh, let's use this thing. So I put a little bottle there. Okay, by the way, I don't need to move the camera. I just need to move the focus point. So you can move the focus point in several ways. One way is with this one. So we might as well, you know, go over here, first of all. So I'm pressing this button to move it to single. I don't need to take multiple shots. The single is, is fine. So if I want to get this out of focus, I can use this one. I can use this one even this one, but this is for the vertical. So if I go over here, and then you can focus many different ways. You can click here. So you see when it's green means it's in focus, or you can do it with the pressing, the, just the, the shutter button. You can press it halfway. I think everybody knows that you can focus like that. But one thing that I want you to get used to is using this one. Because what the good thing about it is sometimes the other one, especially because it's so silent, you may be taking shots and not knowing it. Here you know that this is only for focus, okay? So you can click it many times. Once it's in focus, you can shoot, okay? Once you shoot, you can go here to the play mode. Uh, in the play mode, you have different options. So I'm, pr I'm just pressing on to the bottom. You have different view options. So here we have a histogram. Here it says where I focus. Here, uh, basic information. And I can leave it just in whichever one I want, okay? Now, let's see if it's in focus. So here you have plus and minus. You can also do this, right? So this is the equivalent of with your fingers. You can see it's perfectly in focus. Now it helps that this is a macro lens, by the way. Uh, so it's designed for this type of shots. But anyway, so let's let's keep on going through some of the basic functions that we have here. Uh, I usually don't shoot with the, you know, with the monitor, but since we have it here, I'm just so that taking a little bit of that reflection. Off. So since we have it here, let's see all the things that we can do here. So by the way, so here we have the little, so the little trash can, if I go to the, let me go to the, okay. So the trash can, I can just click on that and it's gonna ask me, do you wanna erase it, yes or no? If I click the trash can again, it's yes. If I click the play button again, then no, okay? What else do we have here? Display, so this is kind of the same thing. So whenever you take a shot, all the display settings. Uh, we already talked about this one. This is our information. Now information gives you the most important information that you would need. Since here we are in the play mode, for example, I can put ratings, I can put, you know, retouch. I can even record a memo and we're gonna look an easier way to do that. Why would I record a memo? Well, maybe you're a place that you want to remember later on that you took that picture and you want to remember what that place was. You see how it went off? So you can touch just about any button. I just touched the, the shooter. Okay, by the way, you see, so I focus on this one. Okay, what else do we have here? So this is the stuff, the most basic stuff. Now let's go back to shooting, so I'm gonna how do I know that I'm on play on shooting? Well, here you can see I'm, I cannot move anything. Well, it's moving the picture. So I hit again and now it's on shooting mode, right? So on shooting mode. So now let's look at all the different things. The most important thing is that you can do in the shooting mode from here. So first thing that you wanna do is put it in focus, okay? Then the second thing, so we talked about the top buttons. So I'm gonna hit H1 mode, so I have it in manual mode, I can go to program mode, shooter priority, um, aperture priority, and so on. So I'm gonna leave it in manual. This one, again, right now I'm on single, uh, but if I had it on continuous, well, I have low continuous and high continuous. High continuous 
if I hit on that little symbol, I can change how many shots I want, 12, 15, 20. Okay, what else do we have? We talked about the bracketing, one stop, two stops, then the flash compensation. This is if you have flash on, then you can increase or decrease. What else do we have here? So here we have exposure compensation. Again, you if you are not happy with what the camera is telling you, you can either add or subtract more exposure. Very important, ISO. Now with the ISO, the front wheel, I can change the ISO like this. You see how the exposure is changing? Because whenever you change one of the three, so you have what is called the exposure triangle, shutter speed, the f-stop or aperture, and ISO. So if you increase the ISO, you're increasing the eye sensitivity, okay? So the other thing you can do is if you move the other wheel, so it's a little tricky with this other wheel. So again, I'm pressing the ISO and the front wheel allows you to change from auto to manual ISO. So auto ISO is gonna set the ISO automatically to give you exposure. I like to leave it at manual for now, uh, because again, I'm just doing an object. If I were shooting birds or something outside where I don't have time to change the the ISO, then I may, I may put it on auto ISO. What else do we have here? So this is again, the, the press to for the focus. Uh, so I think this kind of covers just about all the most important stuff. Oh, sorry. So here on the button, you have a white balance, okay? So you can adjust the white balance. Right now it's auto. So there are two modes of auto. Auto, like a neutral auto or auto natural light is called. Daylight, cloudy, shade, fluorescent, and so on. By the way, this one is important. So when you're shooting with um, when you're shooting with strobe lights, you need to check what is the the temperature for your lights. Mine is usually about there. Okay, so 50 to 60. Okay, so you can change that, and you can even do a pre set manual this is with a gray card like the old-fashioned way so right now i'm just going to leave it natural i like the auto natural for now what else all oh, quality so quality so this is the button here okay qualities you want raw you want jpeg so for now i'm just going to leave it at raw okay a wide balance quality lan and you have here the microphone so the microphone would be if you want to record like a memo or something Okay, so this covers the most important functions in the camera. So let's go to the menu. I'm gonna go again. This time I'm not gonna go through every single function. I'm just gonna go through the most important ones because, the, uh, uh, sorry, the menu has many, many, many different functions. Okay, so let's start from the very top. Okay, so from the very top you have the photo menu. Okay, and you have, this is important, focus modes. Uh, so let me just go from the very top. That was not. So you let's start with. The, so right now it's on raw, but you can do that from the outside. So I don't need to do anything there. ISO sensitivity. That's where you wanted to start. Or if you put auto ISO, where does it start? Where does it end? White balance. You can already. If it's something that you can do with one of the outside buttons, I'm not even gonna bother. A picture control. So this is the way your picture looks in your screen. I like it in neutral because neutral is the most similar to raw. Okay, and since I'm not shooting JPEG, I wanted the most, the closest to raw. Color space because when I print, I set everything at sgrb, but you can also do Adobe. So it's up to you, there is really not preference. I leave active the lighting off and noise reduction. All of these things, I, I leave them off. And the reason why I do that is because I wanna have full control of the camera. Um, otherwise I'm doing things and the camera is doing things and then I cannot control what the camera does. 
I want to have full control of the camera. Vignette control, this is fine. You know, if there is some vignetting, let the camera help on that. Diffraction, distortion, again, these are things that happen with your lenses and it will help you with that. If it's flickering, so if it's doing like that little flash thing, you can uh, turn it on. Again, no need to do that. Oh, we didn't talk about the metering. So the metering, so this one, there is an outside button too. So let's talk about that outside button. This one you see over here. So again, I don't change the metering that much, um, but you can do it with the outside button and you have, I usually leave it at matrix, unless I'm shooting a portrait. If I'm shooting a portrait, I may do center weighted if there is a big contrast in light. But the good thing with mirrorless is you can see the exposure, but typically you need a little more, especially if you're doing natural light, unless you put like a reflector or something on the on the face, you usually need more light on the face. So for, and, and I have a whole video on, on this when you're using flash and all that. So, but just very basic for the, uh, portraits, you can use center weight, but for now, this is fine. By the way, I don't know if you notice, so when I go to the right here, I get more information. If I wanna go to the, if I go to the left, I go to the previous menu, you see? So to the right and to the left. To the top is the next one or the previous one. Focus mode, again, this is something I can do from the outside, uh, this is, the button, the focus mode button, so no need to do that. Again, also the sub menu, you can do that from the outside. Now, subject detection, this is an interesting one. So subject detection, you can do with the eye, eye button, the eye button. So let me go back to shooting. If I go to the eye button, you see how I have here all these common things that I usually do. So let's, So this is set picture control, white balance, image quality, but here, this one especially, you can click OK, and then it gives you the option of car, animal, person, and so on. So this is to detect it automatically. Uh, you can also program a button if you want to have it handy. But my point is you don't really need to go all the way to the menu. Uh, but you can also put it in the menu. The menu allows you to do everything. But there is some things that I don't think are worth changing in the menu because you can change it from outside. Again, multiple exposures. This is if you're doing, uh, you know, like a long overlay or if you're doing HDR. So here you have the HDR. So you can do all these things automatically. This one, time lapse video, really cool. You just, you know, let it do its thing. And here you can put how, what is the interval and so on, and you can play around with it. Just do like a short one, just shooting, you know, like a little video and see how how it works for you. Okay, so I think, oh, okay, so it keeps going. So you have shooting menu bank. So think of it as if you have different menus that you can program. So you have A, B, C, and D. Uh, so let's say, I always just use A, but some people may say, you know what? I wanna have, if, if most of what I do is portraits, maybe I leave A as portraits. Once in a while I do sports or action, I'm gonna put all the settings in B. And then for C, all the stuff that I do for landscape. So you can do that, that's perfectly fine. Um, so here you can even have it on or off. The, the Then you have storage folders if you wanna change the defaults, I don't touch that. You can do a lot of these, if you're using Lightroom, you can change a lot of these things in Lightroom anyway. File naming, so this one is important. Role play by slot number two. So you can either, slot number two of your memory card, so you have two slots. Overflow, you can do a backup. You can have the first one shoot raw, the second one on JPEG. So that's, uh, I usually leave it in overflow. If I'm doing an important event, I may do backup. Image area, again, I, you know, this is full versus cropped. I, if I'm shooting full frame, I don't go to crop. You can always crop it later on in post. Image quality, you can do that from the outside, so we have it at raw. Okay, so we already talked about this.
All right, so let's keep on going. I'm not gonna go into video because video is, uh, <laughs> you know, the, sorry for the redundancy, but they a whole video for video. Uh, let's go to the next one. So these are the customers. These, these are important and we'll go through that in a moment. But before doing that, you have the playbacks and you have the setup. The setup is the one that you really do at the beginning. You have format, language, and so on. Now you may say, but format, I do that a lot of times. Uh, finder, display, size, again, things. these are things that you don't need to touch unless you wanna do something. Let's say this one, I don't know what this one is. You can press here, so you have like a little question mark. Oh, well, sometimes it explains it, sometimes it doesn't. So display size, just leave it in standard. But some of these, sometimes you press and it tells you an explanation. Oh, it doesn't tell you an explanation. Okay, sometimes it does, sometimes it does. Uh, AF fine tuning options. So my understanding is these cameras, you don't need to fine tune the lenses, but if you want to, I have a whole video that shows how to fine tune your lenses. Okay, so uh, fine tuning, because it could be back focus or front or focus, that means that it's focus, the lens is focusing wrong and it needs to be fine tuned to the camera. Uh, let's see what else, non-CPU, this is, if you don't have a CPU, if you have a CPU lens, you would know what to do with it. Say focus points, again, never touch these. Auto temperature cutoff, clean, this one is useful, clean sensor, once in a while, you wanna clean the sensor. Although if you shoot a lot, especially outdoors, you may wanna have your sensor clean professionally, okay? So go to one of the, you know, uh, Nikon authorized dealers. So you have your voice, different memos. This one is important, silent mode. So I have it off because, my God, when I had it on, I really, you cannot tell if you're taking a picture or not. So I want, you know, at least to hear a little bit. Uh, and then you have here all the other connections. Here you have the network settings. Uh, well, airplane mode, that one is important, but the one that I would say is most important is this one, connect, connect to smart device, because this is the one that you wanna use when you're doing your snap bridge. So if you go over here, I recommend you use a Bluetooth Okay, and I may do just one video on that because it's gonna take me too long to explain all the steps. It's not complicated, but I may do a video anyway. Okay, so let's go to the custom menu where I know we're on minute 21. So let's go through these real quick. So remember we are on A and you can have different banks. So focus, uh, so when you have it on continuous, you can have it so that it focuses as soon as you hit the the you know the release button or you don't want it to shoot you want it to focus first and then release leave it on the release because when you're taking continuous an action you don't want it to imagine if i don't know it's not perfectly in focus and it doesn't shoot you want it to shoot on the other hand if you're doing you know like a single serve and all that then you really want to shoot when it is in focus so this one I say, okay, focus first and then release. Release is the shooter button. Uh, again, this is how far you want or how quick you want the AF response to be. Uh, for now, I just leave it there. How many focus points? I, I put all of them, why not? Store points by orientation, I wouldn't touch that. AF activation, so this is your back button, okay? And you may want to turn it on or turn it off or a so or you can so you have two options the first option is that you can focus both with your shutter and your af on af on button or you can only do af button i i have both a uh, focus persistence i this one i wouldn't touch it a uh, limit area i'm not gonna discuss in detail some of these i can do that later i want to go through the basic ones uh, focus point is wrap around. That means if you say yes, then you can go all the way to the right and then it reappears on the left instead of going left to right. I don't like that. Uh, focus point display. So this one is, uh, you know, I, I just leave them on. I want to have all of the different ones. 
built-in AF assist illuminator. So this is the little light that goes on whenever you're in the dark so that it allows you to focus. Focus speaking is what you're doing manual focus. It allows you to see if it's in focus or not. It, it, the square goes in green. You can change the color. ISO sensitivity, I would leave it the way it is. One third of stops, that's the standard. Exposure compensation, again, you can do that from outside, so why do it here? Matrix metering, you can do the metering from the outside, so no need to change it here. You see, I have it on matrix metering. So there is this thing called matrix metering face detection. That means that it's on matrix, but you can put it so it has face detection or center weighted. So you have different options within each one. Um, okay, I'm not gonna go through the key, keep exposure with F changes, leave it off. I mean, the whole purpose of the F, which is the, you know, F stop is to change the exposure. So, but again, maybe, you know, some engineers said, let's just keep putting functions. Again, this is a shutter release button. If you want to do a half press burst mode, whatever, I, I just leave it like that. Self timer, you have that in the functions here, so no need to do anything here. Okay, so we have the functions here, so no need to do that. I hope it goes back to, the, oh, mm, not, oh yeah, it does. Power of delay, so here, like right now, I put, you know, 10 minutes for the menu because it kept going off, but I'll change it back to a few seconds. You, you want to sometimes conserve your battery. Continuous shooting speed. So right now, I you remember I told you the button on the top, you can change to 20, uh, 15, maximum shots per burst. You just want to have this infinity because that means when you press the button, take as many pictures as possible. Limit release mode. Uh, I I don't touch that. Uh, we'll talk, we're gonna talk on a different video, a little more detail about autofocus and changing from JPEG and RAW. So from here, I'm not gonna go through these extended shutter speeds. No, again, I don't touch, these things are not um, something that I would touch right now. It limits selectable area, leave it off. Number sequence, yeah, you want it to have the file, the number sequence. View mode, so this one, oh no, okay. I thought this one is the one that gives you all the options start light view photo in live mode let's see if it explains what this is make live view display brighter no that's fine a uh, warm display so this is to change the display i don't really touch this this much again the display is just like a quick view i'm more when i look at this plate for me the most important thing is i magnify and see if it's in focus or not I can always change a little bit the, the exposure in post. Grid type, you can change if you want, you know, more grids. I like three by three. This is kind of a standard, right? So you can do rules of thirds. This one is interesting. So this one you can do also outside. This is the horizon, okay? So it shows you when you move the camera, if you if it's straight or not. Uh, different shooting displays, I'm not gonna customize that. Okay, this one, interesting. So whenever you're doing a high-speed sync, this is when you're shooting flash, and you can look at my shooting. Uh, usually, um, you can either put it on one two hundredth of a second. That, that's the fastest shutter speed that you can sync, or 250. So here, in this case, I'm actually going to change it to 250. You want to have the higher, the better. Flash shutter speed is when you want the uh, flash to to shoot. You can do that at 1 60 of a second. Compensation on the flash, that's the button I told you outside. ISO sensitivity, when you have it in auto, you can put how much you want, the high or the lowest. Modeling flash, again, a lot of functions in flash, I don't even know why you would do them here. That's why it's better to do them in the flash. And I have a whole video on speed lights and I show step by step how to use every single function. This one is interesting, customize the I button. Remember the I button is the one that has your most important information. Now, for now, I I would leave it the way it is. Later on, if you wanna change it, you can change it. 
maybe maybe the airplane mode is not one that is too important, but for now I will just leave it there. So this one, the controls, I want to do this one probably like a separate video. So this is how to program all your different controls, okay? Uh, I, for now, I just leave it as the, you know, as the default. So, so the control ring and reverse ring, these are these, you, so sometimes people like to go from minus to plus, plus to minus. I wouldn't touch those for now. Sorry, what I meant is this one. These are the, where you can customize all the buttons. So you can change the I menu. You can do, so this is going to be very useful. And we're going to do a whole video on this because this is so extensive. And then I will give you my recommendations of what I would, or what would I do for F1, F2, F3. You even have F4 and you can even program other buttons so that you have those handy. So if you want to change to 3D, for example, and, and so on. So let me, oops. Okay. So for now, we're not going to touch these, leave them all. Oh, interesting zebra pattern. Okay. We'll talk about that separately. Um, all right. So this is the main things. I told you this is very extensive. I'm just going over the basics. A uh, playback menu, we already talked about setup. I think we, yes, we talked about setup. Yeah, that's the one that has format. Then you have LAN, the one that I told you is the smart device. And this one, this one I do want you to, to play around with. This is my menu. So here you're going to put all the most important stuff. And how do you do that? Very easy. You just go here to add items. Okay. And then you can say, okay, I want to add items, let's say from the shooting menu. Okay. The, if I, for example, so the bank, that's an interesting one. So I'm going to click, okay. You see how it now added it? Well, I can even move it because that's not something I change a lot. So I'm going to put it kind of to the bottom, to the bottom. And now it's safe. So in my menu, now I have, okay. So I'm going to go back to menus menus. So on the bottom one is my personal menu, the things that I want to have handy from everything. So again, um, so what do I have? Image quality, connect to a smart device, focus speaking, menus. Um, and, and by the way, if you want to change the ranking, you can do that here. So I'd like to leave format um, first. Vibra this one important, vibration reduction, because sometimes if you're shooting from a tripod, you want to turn that off. Image quality. This one actually is not that important because you have it in a button, but sometimes you want to have it there. So again, put here the things that are really important to you. Okay, so we are in the 32 minute mark. Uh, I think we're going to cut it. Well, I'm going to do one more thing because this one is important. So when you're in the I button, at least the basics of, um, by the way, I just touched the shooter button. It took me to the other menu. You do the I button. And I think one that is worth mentioning, we're in the 32 minute point. I'm going to spend five more minutes is the autofocus. So the autofocus you have here, a um, single servo, but I can change it from the top. So I don't need to do it here, um, sorry, with this button, the button over here. So you see, and you should get used to changing it from there because that button is only for that. So that one, I will not change it there. But once you're there, okay, you click on this. So here's where it gets interesting, right? So you're here and, and then you want to have the different modes within here. So I'm gonna go over here and you have, let's start from the very beginning. So you have from the smallest, which is, you know, that little area, single, manual, low, wide, much wider. So this is how wide you can go. This one is important, 3D. 3D, you may even want to program a button. I, I'm already thinking about which one I'm gonna use. So this is when, let's say you're focusing something in action and you have it in wide. 
But then you want to switch to 3D so that it follows, let's say it's like an animal or something, and you want it to follow along, so you put it in 3D. Now, if I put it in 3D, maybe I want to make sure that if it's an animal, then I put it as an animal. If it's a person, a person or a car, so it gives you all these different options. Or you can have one that automatically detects one versus the other. Okay, so this is important. And you can have those options even if it's not on 3D. Again, 3D is when the point is moving by itself, following along. Here is just how wide you want the focus point to be. So you, I have it here. I put it in wide. And I'm going to put um, animal. So right now, when I go back to shooting, okay, so this is now wide. And if, if this was an animal, I would automatically focus an animal, but obviously there is nothing here, so it's not gonna do, it's not gonna do anything. But that, that's where you need to make the changes, here on the eye. Uh, what else do we have here? Raw, uh, wide balance. So this is the most important stuff, metering the motion vibration, in which bank you're at, if you want to go back to your custom controls, airplane mode, and then memory card information one versus two. So this is the most important one, and I wanted to go over real quick. Okay, so we're in the 35 minute uh, point. This is again, basic settings functions. I'm sure I've forgotten some. Please feel free to put in the comments any questions you have and I could address it either on the comments on or in a separate video. Um, so we're gonna do a whole video on autofocus because that's uh, very important. And for that, I wanna take some pictures on the different modes so you can see the differences. And then we're also gonna um, do obviously one on the video modes and one on programming the buttons and other more advanced stuff. So we'll call that the advanced settings video. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you like this type of videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Thank you.